Hello and welcome back to the Q&A. So I'm going to start this one off with a bit of an appeal for questions. I'm pretty much out of questions and things like that. And unfortunately, everything from the last episode basically was all on one topic. So yeah, we're kind of limited for today's episode. So if you've got questions about anything World of Warcraft, not just Warlords of Draenor, um, anything at all, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Anyway, with all that said, there are a few questions to cover. So let's, uh, let's get on to that. The first one is from someone whose name I do not have, who said, do we know what's on the other side of Azeroth? So that's a bit of an interesting enough question. Our map of Azeroth is, of course, a, you know, just a 2D thing, right? But obviously, I mean, that would wrap around Azeroth. So f for all we know, all of Azeroth could be represented on that map. Of course, it doesn't have the sort of curvature and stuff like, say, a modern map of the world would that, like, compensates for things. But essentially, that could be all of Azeroth. What I think what we don't really know is what is to the very far right of the map and what is to the very far left of the map. Do they just continue on from each other? I, is that where they kind of like the seams would meet if you were just wrapping this around the globe? Or is there something there? That's I think that's the really interesting question. I think that like lore-wise, I don't know if that area has ever been discovered because apparently any ships who went... I think it's the Forgotten Sea or something, but any ships who, like, would go past there would just sort of disappear. Which doesn't really bode too well for traveling there, but it does mean that there's probably something interesting going on. So I'm certainly... I'm quite keen, actually, to see what that's like. Another thing that we haven't really seen is ice caps in Azeroth. Now that I think about it, just in terms of things we haven't seen. Um, obviously, we have Northrend, but Northrend is more akin to, say, Greenland or, or, um, or Iceland or something. We haven't actually seen the equivalent of Antarctica or, of course, the North Pole. So, I don't know, maybe it would be cool if some little phase quest could send us up to one of Azeroth's poles. Maybe there could be, like, a really cool Titan facility there. I think that would be amazing. And one of the reasons why they could say that we've never been there before is that it's obviously quite hard to travel to an area like that when you're just in a regular style of ship. So maybe we could have a look at that. I think that would be really cool. As for things that are on the other side of Azeroth, or maybe not just off the map, well, there could be an island, there could be a continent, there could be anything. I think more importantly, it's going to be just whatever the hell this thing is that keeps on meaning that ships disappear. Uh, maybe Nazoth could have something going on, or perhaps just any ships that go that far. I don't know, maybe Nazoth just MCs everyone on it and gets them all to jump off the side of the ship or something. Hard to know, really, it's all speculation. But certainly there could be an expansion surrounded, you know, like, around that. Because, guess what? If it's a bit of empty space, and Blizzard can conjure up what, whatever the hell they want. And there is a little bit of intro lore about that idea of ships disappearing that could certainly lead to a story. Generally, they like to put just little, like, snippets of information like that in so that they can sort of hook on them later. Okay, so the next question is also from someone whose name I do not know who said that they would like a dungeon or scenario in the Caverns of Time, like it used to be, that would show us the Battle of Arithai, or the First War, the Second War, or things like that, and it could just be done in a way that doesn't screw up the lore. I absolutely agree. It, I think it would have to be done by the Infinite Dragonflight, though. Um, uh, just so that they have some sort of way to get us in there, because the previous Infinite Dragonflight things in the Caverns of Time didn't really disrupt the flow of time. The only difference was Arthas was like, oh, whoa, that's a new thing, whatever, and then we helped him kill it and there was no difference. So, yes, I think they should do that, and maybe they could have some sort of subplot that goes on throughout the next few expansions that means that every one or two patches or whatever, we get some cool little thing in the Caverns of Time. That could just be a running thing in Warcraft, and I think it would be really cool if they could just go and do that. You know, something that's not a key part of the main story, but something that's just a little side thing that we got to just run off with and um, and have a bit of fun. So, yeah, absolutely. In terms of things that I want to see, well, the First War and Second War are prime targets, I suppose. And so is, like, the War of the Ancients and stuff like that. And really just any big event in Azeroth's history. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded seeing something like, I don't know, stuff that went on in Argus, like, 25,000 years ago when the Drain and I were fleeing. I just think some of that could be so cool, but I'd imagine that it's going to be its own expansion at some point. Maybe not us going back, but perhaps in the full-on Burning Legion expansion, we'll get to see some of that stuff. Or at least just see Arcus itself. Yeah, whatever it is, like, there's a lot of potential with the Caverns of Time, and 
Oh, I don't know, they haven't really used it to its full potential in quite a while. In my opinion, anyway, like, the end time stuff was pretty cool, but the main strength of the Caverns of Time is being able to show things that have already happened again in the format of a dungeon or a raid or something like that. As for scenarios being there, I kind of hope that doesn't happen because I don't think scenarios are very fun. So, yeah, right, let's move on to the next question. And this one is from Catherine, who said, Do you think Toronto will appear in Warlords of Draenor, or will she just be stuck in Darnassus? And the answer to that is the latter. Basically, most of the faction leaders are still at home. They didn't go through the portal, so they're not really involved in the expansion story at all. If you're Alliance, you'll be dealing with um, Murad, Yerul, and a few people like that. And if you're Horde, you'll be dealing with Duratan, Kanar, Thrall, and, and people like that. So, not really any of the faction leaders, but certainly quite a few big enough characters. I think it's okay, though, just to get rid of the faction leaders for a bit. Maybe something cool can happen with them in the next expansion, but having a break from that is definitely welcome. It also sort of, I guess, carries on the idea of what happened at the end of the 5.4 cinematic, where all of the big, like, faction leaders and just factions in general will be trying to, you know, just recover, build stuff up, and try to chill out for a bit. That's That was at least the vibe of the end of Pandaria, but then, of course, all this Draenor stuff happens, so it seems like we're rushing off to deal with that while they get ready at home, so I guess that's reflected as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. This one is from Good Time Buddies, who said, Do you think World PvP has a lot more potential in WoW? Ashran just uh, doesn't seem like enough for World PvP or since it's too small. I think the thing with World PvP is that a lot more of the game has to be designed around it. Ashran is just a kind of like continuous battleground, really. And that's fine, it, it does what it does well enough, I suppose. But for there to be World PvP, I think, first of all, there can't be any flying. Second, there needs to be something in the world that rewards the World PvP, so maybe that's control of an area that people like, or perhaps just like flat out rewards. If you could get Ashran strong boxes by just doing regular PvP anywhere in the world, then I suppose that would be cool, but, you know, again, like, that whole Tower and Mill South Shore thing was... It was quite unique, really, in the way that it popped up. If you look at a lot of games that are trying to do lots of PvP now, it's it's generally more a thing that happens in sandbox games, like, say, EVE, or I think even Arch Age, um, Arc Age. It just, I don't think it's going to happen in WoW again, in that old traditional style. Every time the Blizzard tried to put in something like, say, the the towers, or, yeah, yeah, like the towers in Hellfire, or the towers in the Plaguelands, or what was going on in Auchendoon, or Hala in the Grand, just none of those things actually turn into world PvP that happens. So I think it's pretty clear that it's just not the thing that's really going to happen in WoW. Yeah, uh, maybe if there was, like, two major settlements in the game that were close by each other that had some sort of like major reward or something or just useful thing around them then there could be world pvp but that's basically what ashran is it's two big you know settlements with a road in the middle between them that you fight over so yeah look it's it's hard to really think about world pvp it's one of those things that's very emergent and it depends on a whole bunch of other factors it's not like they can just slap in a few towers give maybe some honor for capturing those towers and put that in a zone and just say hey we have world pvp now it's very hard to get players to actually participate in it because a lot of people like structure. WoW was a very different game back then, and I just... I don't really know if that could really ever happen again. So, right, let's move on to another question. This one's from StanKata95, who asks what the Pandaren are doing in Warlords of Draenor, and the answer to that is pretty much nothing, which I'm happy enough with because, frankly, I'm kind of tired of seeing them after Miss of Pandaria. Uh, next, uh, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of questions and things like that about the idea of there being two burning legions going around. Look, I think none of this is really going to matter because what's going to happen is when Draenor's finished, we'll probably, like, hop out in whatever portal takes us and then just, like, seal the, the problem, you know, be completely sealed off and separated from that timeline forever, thus getting rid of any problems with there being two sets of old gods, two sets of the burning legion, because all that is just, like, so messy in terms of lore. The reason why we're connected to this alternate terrain or thingy is because, um, like, half the hourglass of time is there, half of it's in our planet. So, I'd say that the legendary quest will probably deal with that lore point. And what will happen is, we'll defeat Grimash, defeat the Iron Horde, and find a way to sever the link and then go back home before the link is severed. And that will probably be the end. Yeah, I don't think we'll have to deal with, like, there being two Sagarises or two Kiljadens or anything like that. 
Because it would just ruin the lore in our own timeline, and that would be really shitty. So finally, there's a question from uh, Felix, who said, What are the difference between the neutral goblins and um, just basically all the other goblins that are going on in the game? So, right, you've got the Steamweedle Cartel, who are the, um, like the goblins that were hanging around the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor for the longest time. They're just the neutral bunch of goblins, led by a trade prince who's neutral and just wants money. If you look at, say, the Horde Goblins, they were rescued by Horde ships, so that's why they're kind of sympathetic towards the Horde, and I'm pretty sure, like, there was a deal cut between Gallywix and Garrosh, where Gallywix would sort of basically just lend workers, slaves, and aid and things like that to build up a Shara and build, like, weapons and stuff. So really, that's what was going on with the Goblins. It's like, the Horde got their own personal Goblins, and then this Trade Prince and all the goblins that were following him are now on their side. But the Steamweedle Cartel is just a different cartel of goblins, different trade prince, or trade whatever, dude. So, yeah, they're basically just different factions. Um, and Gadgetan, Booty Bay, etc., all controlled by the same faction, which is the Steamweedle Cartel. So that's basically how that's going. Lore-wise, it all makes sense. They're basically just different factions, but the same race. And that's essentially it for the Q&A. Again, I just want to reiterate, if you have any questions about anything in World of Warcraft, be it the new expansion or not, please leave them down in the comments, because, yeah, it's it's useful when there's lots of questions to, to pick from. And, uh, yeah, that'll be pretty cool. And really anything, like, if it's lore, that's great. If it's game mechanics, that's great too. And so, yeah, questions are great. Anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.